I hate to be the bearer of some bad news. Now, the good news is right now, we looked over the, uh, the, the polling data right now, and that is Bernie Sanders is leading in Nevada. With the last poll that's recently been out, he's up there by 30%, 30.6% to be more accurate. He's a clear front runner in that race. Um, however, Nevada is a caucus state. And now the Nevada Democratic Party is notifying about 1,000 early voters that their ballots have been voided for errors, the Nevada Independent reported on Thursday. The number of voted ballots account for 2.8% of 36,000 ballots cast in three of the first four days of early voting in the state of Nevada. Election officials have said that they are counting other 39,000 ballots, which could result in more unusable ballots. An election official told The Independent that most of the errors were from people who failed to sign the ballots. Now, the thing is, Paul DuPont brought this up during the show, and that is, if there's not enough information or clear documentation showing that people need to sign the ballots, then that is the fault of the Nevada Democratic primary because people normally, when you go in, you vote, and then that's it. There's not to be that expected signature. But if this is an ongoing problem or there's not clear instructions, which there should be, then this could chip into Bernie Sanders' lead, and a lot of these ballots could be gone. So the affected voters are being notified by text and will have the opportunity to participate in person in Saturday's caucus. But remember, they could be out of state at this point, so they may not be able to attend. And the Hill did reach out to the uh, uh, Nevada Democratic Par uh, uh, Party, but however, this report uh, has added to more anxiety to, towards whether people think caucuses will run smoothly after what happened in Iowa, where we waited two and a half days just to get the final result of, what, of who won that race. And as it stands right now, data is showing that, you know, Bernie Sanders is still in the lead. or what, He's in the lead and yeah. pop, popular vote count, but they're having Pete Buttigieg in the lead in state delegate equivalents by mm -hmm. less than a tenth of a percent. Yeah. And Democracy, let's, uh, people. Well, let's not forget our, our good friend... Yeah. Tom Perez, when we reported this list earlier this week, I have a lot of confidence in Nevada, a really, really strong party. We have gone to school on the lessons of Iowa. We're as low tech as humanly possible while still preserving efficiency. There's a good chance Nevada, and I hate saying this, and I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong on this one. But there's a good chance Nevada could be Iowa 2.0. And I'm so very sorry to say this. Dan Paul weighing on this. So this is both good news and bad news in different ways. So the good news is Sanders has a much bigger lead than he did in Iowa. Much bigger. He's leading by all polls uh, in double digits. Early voting is pretty big. I mean, you have, again, these thousand. Again, it's poorly run as kind of we expect in a caucus. So it's going to be nearly impossible for them. They're, most of they're probably going to be able to do is just cut his margin down at this point. But it also helps out, like I've been saying before, that if we have the situation where that's developing here and it happens the way it looks like it might be, if you have Iowa happening the way it is, if you have Nevada happening the way it might, you also have Mike Bloomberg acting the way he did to get on the debate stage. Sanders has a angle to publicly shame the DNC into greater transparency. And I hope he goes down that path. Maybe a better path is that everything goes work, everything works fine in Nevada. I would expect that Sanders to have a lot of people, just like in Iowa, ready and poll watching, making sure everything's on the up and up. But I am not all that worried about it. I think that we've kind of expected, and we've kind of talked about this, that we expect Sanders to be dinged a few percentage points in many states. And he has to overwin with that, but with the establishment field so split and him surging and rising, and every time that he wins a state, you know, the news can only do so much to cover up his victory. Like right now, if you look up who's winning on Google, it'll show you the delegate count, which will show Mayor Pete in front. But he wins California, wins Super Tuesday states, wins South Carolina, wins Nevada it's kind of a tide that they won't be able to stop. And so that's where I'm looking at this and how I have been looking at this, that if Sanders just keeps racking up victories and keeps, even if it's the first few states, because there's not that many delegates in the first four states. I mean, South Carolina, there's more, but um, he just needs to get this viewpoint, and then everyone's like, well, he's, gonna, he's the presumptive nominee, and no one can stop it at that point. Yep, exactly. Paul? I think, so... There are a couple of things about this that are yet unknown. So is, is it that poll uh, workers are telling people 
not to sign the document, or are they telling them that they don't, or are they uh, failing to tell them that they have to? So the failing that they tell them that they have to is if, if there is a place for a signature on the document, I, I don't know that, that that's that big of an outrage. Like if somebody gave you, like if you were in school and you got a test and they asked you to put your name at the top, if there was a space for your name at the top, you would do it. You also would know that the multiple choice bubbles need to be filled in in order for you to answer the question. Like this yeah. is not an unusual thing to see a place for a signature. If the document says you must sign this, then it kind of exonerates the, the poll workers. But given the fact that the poll workers uh, have had apparently pretty sketchy education as to how to go about doing this, there's some possibility, like the, the, the really negative possibility would be is if any to poll workers were telling people actively to not mm -hmm. sign the document, which we don't have any evidence of at this point. Right. Um, yeah. but, but that would be that would be a real high bar. Uh, that, that, would be, that would be the kind of thing that then we would yell at them. Then we, yeah. then they, they deserve every little bit of our ire. Um, and, you know, it's a thing that, I mean, the, the requirement for a signature is not something that should be overturned either. Obviously, th these are absentee ballots. They're designed to be mailed in. So some, some record of I am the person I claim to be, some legally binding yeah. thing uh, is, uh, is totally appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the thing. At the end of the day, um, we... We need to keep an eye on this primary, how it's going to turn out. Now, we are going to definitely, you know, talk about the aftermath of the Nevada primary. It's happening uh, on Saturday, right? Happening on Saturday. We, I'm hoping that the results are more efficient, but seeing as some people are raising alarms and concerns about this now, and plus the questionable activity that's happening, there is a possibility that this could be another Iowa, which I'm pretty sure we don't want to see happen, but we will be reporting on here at Hardlands Media. But here's definitely hoping that Bernie Sanders and his campaign are ready to fight like they were in Iowa because this is going to be something we need to keep an eye out and will potential other caucus of state be the same? I hope not, but who knows? Knowing Tom Perez, he has confidence in the system. <laughs> the question is, do any of you have confidence yeah. in the system? And that's not the case. We, we I just want to say yeah, very quickly before we move on that for me, we're in a, pres we're in a position that I look at it like Sanders, if they try to pull shenanigans because of the margin he's pulling at, he could it, it, it could benefit him, like I said earlier. And if it goes smoothly, it's going to benefit him. So from my point of view, I think that the likelihood of like them doing something so drastic as to like not put him in first, like that seems almost out of the realm of like what they can get by with. So we'll see if I'm right. I mean, I might be, I might be a little naive on this. I might be a little too optimistic on mm -hmm. this, but I'm feeling much better if they try and pull something like this than last time. 